In this video, we're gonna be disassembling a PlayStation 3 Super Slim. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to fix these if they break. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to replace each component in a PlayStation 3 Super Slim. There's various different models. You can check what model you have by looking at the back here. It should say CECH 4000 something. And the more important numbers to look out for are the first two numbers. The last two numbers indicate the country code, the country that you bought it in. All of the PS3 Super Slim systems are very, very similar. So this video applies to all PlayStation 3 Super Slims. However, the parts are not interchangeable. When replacing parts and ordering parts, make sure you keep the model number in mind because the parts are most likely not going to be interchangeable between one PlayStation 3 Super Slim model and another PlayStation 3 Super Slim model. We sell all PS3 Super Slim parts on our website at fasttechstore.com. So make sure to check us out. You can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. So the first thing I'm gonna be showing you guys how to replace is the hard drive. On top of the system, there's a cover that we can slide off like this. There's gonna be a Phillips screw that we're gonna have to remove. And we're gonna use our FastTech Pro Auto Kit with a Phillips bit attached to it. We're gonna go ahead and remove this screw. Now that we got the screw out of the way, we're gonna pull on this tab and the hard drive's gonna come out. If you're getting a PS3 cannot start error message, you most likely need to replace the hard drive. This one here is a 250 gig. We got 250 gig, 500 gig, one terabyte in stock. Again, links in the description box. To get the hard drive out of its caddy, there's four screws that have to be removed. They're also Phillips. And now we got the hard drive out of the enclosure. Since we are gonna be disassembling the whole system, next we're gonna remove these Torx T8H screws at the top. And this screwdriver bit is also available in our FastTech Pro Auto Kit. One more here. Now we're gonna flip the console on its back. We're gonna go ahead and remove this sticker right here. This is considered a warranty sticker in some jurisdictions, but in this case, the system is eight to nine years old, so it doesn't have any warranty. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the sticker. And there's gonna be a screw underneath. There's gonna be this tab that we have to remove here. And this rubber foot here. Now we're gonna switch back to a Phillips bit and remove these Phillips screws. Now we're gonna flip the console back over and we're gonna open the disk drive. We're gonna switch to a Torx T8H and we're gonna undo these screws. Now we're gonna remove these two pieces and you can do that by lifting them up from this side here. And you wanna be careful with this part because the clips on these are very easy to break. See, what we're trying to do is we're trying to lift this up like that. There you go. And you heard it on click. And now we're just gonna like push it over. There you go. That, push down, and it's off. Let's try this side. I'm gonna lift it up. Oh, this might be getting in the way. These are some aftermarket warranty stickers. There you go. 
That would have definitely been getting in the way. I'm gonna lift this side up. Aside from the disc drive, push like that. There you go. Now we're gonna switch back to our Phillips bit and we're gonna remove these screws. At this point, after we remove these screws, this panel is just gonna come off like that from the back up. And now we pretty much got access to the whole system. The first thing we can remove is the disc drive or really the laser deck. Um, it's not a complete disc drive assembly, but I suppose it is. <laughs> so we're gonna remove the cable here by pulling it up. This one has a clip that you must lift up first like that. You're gonna hear it click and then you're gonna pull the blue side up. We're gonna lift it out slightly. There's a small cable here that we're gonna remove like that. And that's the laser deck right there. If your PS3 Super Slim is not reading any games, you most likely, first thing you wanna do is clean this laser. And you can do that without even opening up the system because you have access to this laser just by removing the slide off. You wanna clean this laser with a Q-tip and alcohol, but if that doesn't work, order a new laser deck from fasttechstore.com. Links are gonna be in the description box. And you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. Next up, we got the power supply. There's a couple of screws that hold it in. There's one here. And there's one here. There's a cable here that we're gonna grab, wiggle, and lift up. Get this cable out of the way. And then we can lift the power supply out of the way. That's the power supply right there. It's a model ADP 160 AR, says right here. And normally these die in most cases due to a power surge, a lightning strike, or sometimes just overheating. So if your PS3 is not working after a surge and it's not turning on at all, that means when you press the power button here at the front, there's no beep, there's no light, there's no response from the system. In 99% of the cases, it's a dead or defective power supply. And as always, we sell these on our website as well. Links in the top comment and the description box. Now we're gonna get the motherboard assembly out of the system. We're gonna remove the power connector cable here at the front and we're gonna lift the power button and that's the power button right there. It's a model MSW001. We're gonna remove these screws that hold the motherboard assembly onto the plastic case. We should be able to lift this out of the system. Now we're going to remove the fan connector, which is right here. And we're going to remove these two antenna cables. We're going to flip this thing over, and there's some more screws on the other side. We're going to switch to a bigger Phillips for these. Now this plate should come off and now we should be able to set the motherboard free because we've removed all the cables and everything else. We're just going to lift it up slightly from the USB side. Don't use too much force like that. Thermal paste is going to be making it stuck onto the board and that's the motherboard right there. This is a model NPX001. That's the RSX chip right there. That's the graphics processor and that's the CPU. 
One thing you'll notice compared to previous PS3 models, the RSX chip is missing a heat plate like with the CPU. And you can actually see the shrunken RSX chip. This is a much smaller die than the previous systems. That's the Bluetooth network module right there. If your PS3 is not connecting to controllers anymore, even if you've bought a new controller, it's still not connecting. It's most likely this chip and it needs to be desoldered and a new one attached. That's the CMOS battery right there. If you're getting a CE error and your games are not loading from the hard drive or the disc, and you get that infamous CE error, you need to replace this CMOS battery here. And with the motherboard being out, that concludes our PS3 Super Slim disassembly video. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to check out my vlog channel in which I travel the world and I record my adventures. I promise you won't be disappointed, and the link for that is in the top comment and the description box. This is Young Tech God from Fast Tech, signing out.